Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to Karachi, Pakistan. So in today's video, there are five things that I want to share with you. And hopefully those five things will help you when you travel to Karachi. So first off, let me say the people. I absolutely love the people of Karachi. They've been absolutely fantastic. Very friendly, very polite. And you know, whenever I see someone in the street or when they see me in the street, they would stop me. They would speak to me, ask me where I'm from. They're just welcoming people to their city and they are so grateful that we decided to come to their city and to explore and to tell the world about their place. Some people would actually tell me to be careful for con artists and, uh, but I can tell you now, I've never had any experience with any con artist, uh, except for the one at the airport, obviously the immigration office, but you can watch that video to hear all about that. But other than that, nobody else has bothered me. I've never felt unsafe. And then added to that, people are very generous. There are so many occasions that I've gone to restaurants and uh, food vendors and uh, I would buy something and they would refuse to take payment from me. And even though I insist on paying, they would just refuse it and say, no, it's on the house. And uh, they would add then, welcome to our beautiful Karachi. Well, that takes me to the second part of what I want to share with you. And that is the food. Wow, guys, I got to tell you, I might be a bit biased, but Karachi has some of the best food that I've ever tasted in all of my travels. I love spicy food. I love uh, food with a little bite to it. So it has to be hot and spicy and, and strong. And uh, But you don't have to always take it as spicy. You can ask for the medium or the mild. But in my case, obviously I love hot food, so I would ask for hot. But the flavors. Wow guys, I can't speak enough about the flavors. I've tried the national dishes of Karachi or of Pakistan. Two of them being biryani and the other one being Nihari. So those are the two that I've tasted the most, I've tried the most because it was so delicious. I just didn't want to try anything else other than the street food. But the biryani, guys, it is so delicious. It is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And then also the Nihari, which is the slow cooked beef in a spicy sauce. Wow, guys, I can't speak enough about it. And then of course, also they have the street food and um, they have samosas, they have the pastries, the meat pastries. In Back in South Africa, we call them meat pies or something. You have it in chicken or beef and um, you have the samosas as well. You've got the minced beef, potato, corn and cheese, and chicken samosas as well. Those are very lovely. And you can find the street vendors everywhere. There is no shortage of food. There's no shortage of restaurants. Every street has them. Every street corner has them. I went to a street vendor at about 11.30 in the evening. That's just around the guest house that I was staying. But of course, then you also have the Burns Road Food Street, which is a street that's dedicated to restaurants and food and vendors. So there's no shortage. You can find it anywhere. And guys, believe me when I say the food is absolutely delicious. You know, I have a thing for street food. I mentioned in some of my videos, especially the ones in the Philippines, that I'm very careful on careful of having street food, especially when I'm not staying in a place long enough. And uh, the reason for that is that, you know, you don't want any accidents when you're on the road. But when you're staying long enough, maybe two or three days, then I guess it's okay. But for me, guys, the first day I landed, I tried the street food straight away. I couldn't resist the way it looked and the way it smelled. And uh, I just had it and I've never had any issues. I had no food poisoning, nothing like that whatsoever. Even the drinking water was fine, but I would always advise to drink bottled water. You know, obviously when you're traveling, always make that the first priority to to use bottled water and not the tap water even though it was okay for me the next thing i want to speak about is the language so there are two official languages in pakistan the one being urdu or urdu and the other being english but the national language in pakistan is 
Urdu. But I got to say that I found English to be a bit of a challenge. Most people didn't understand me so well and I didn't understand them so well. And uh, so most of the time I would either speak to security officers at banks and uh, some business areas where I would see an official person maybe and I would speak to them and they seem to understand English quite okay or better than the rest. So English was a bit of a challenge. I would advise you to use a translator app when you come to Karachi or Pakistan. I'm not sure how it is in the other areas of Pakistan, but in Karachi, definitely there was a challenge. Then the next thing I want to speak about is the safety issue. You know, many people asked me why I chose Karachi, uh, given that it's not safe. And I gotta say, I didn't know at the time that Karachi was voted in 2021 as the second least safe city in the world. So I don't know if it's um, based on stats or if it's just stereotype, I don't know. But I can tell you now that I've had no issues whatsoever. I felt safe everywhere I went. Because I'm traveling solo, I go to places by myself. I walk in dark alleys late nights. Uh, I jump a taxi, I jump a, uh, a rickshaw during the day. Um, but at no point whatsoever did I feel unsafe and at no point did I feel threatened. Of course you gotta do, you gotta be alert wherever you go, as in any big city, you gotta be aware of your surroundings, be alert, because muggings and pickpocketing are not unique to Karachi, it happens everywhere. So uh, if you do come to Karachi, just be prepared, uh, be diligent uh, wherever you go. So for me, that was never an issue. And then finally guys, I want to speak about the transport system. Getting around in Karachi was very easy. It was very simple. They actually used the, the app called InDrive. Um, and uh, InDrive is, uh, is a worldwide app anyway. We use it back in South Africa as well. So you can call a bike, a rickshaw or a tuk-tuk. Um, you have a choice between air-conditioned vehicle or non-air-conditioned vehicle and uh, it's quite simple you just well obviously the only thing you need is you need to register on the app and you need to register with a with a local sim or with a local number so if you don't have a local number you can't register on the app unless you've registered beforehand in your your own country but getting around was very simple there's also bus services uh, i don't quite know what the prices are but the prices for the bikes and the rickshaw was extremely cheap and it was very affordable so i want to thank the people of karachi for their hospitality and for welcoming me with open arms and it was such a pleasure to visit your beautiful city thank you guys and to all the friends that i've met see you around next time thank you guys and peace